Welcome back to part three of my Heathkit H8 computer project. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, you might want to go back and take a look at those and find out a little bit about the history of this computer, and where I picked it up, and what I've done to it so far. One of the things that I really need to do to keep this project going is to find a way to load and save data to the system. And I plan to do that using audio cassette tapes. That was kind of the first method after paper tape that these systems used and it'll make this go a lot easier going forward if I don't have to type out programs on that keypad every single time. Also one of the things that was bothering me uh, that you noticed in the last video was that there are uh, LEDs that are partially out on the front panel and we replaced a couple of the just the single LEDs but the seven segment LEDs have some problems too two of them actually have missing segments. One is really easy to see on the bottom. There's a missing segment and uh, I was really lucky that I looked on eBay and for a fairly reasonable price I found a vendor that had replacements for these, the exact FND 500 seven segment LEDs that I needed for this. So I was thinking originally those were going to be really hard to source and I am very glad to have found them. So now we've got that one fixed, and then the far LED has a center segment out, and you can see that if I enter some numbers in here, so let's get a 3 over in that position, and you can notice that um, indeed the center segment is missing. So we'll go ahead and pop up replacement into that really quick, and that should get us uh, going. It's going to be nice to get this display 100%. One of the things that you're going to notice throughout this video is this machine has some really bizarre sound problems and I will talk a little bit more about that later and hopefully if you have some ideas what could be causing that I would love to hear them. And there we are. We have all of our segments. So going back for just a second to the issue with the sound. it It's an issue that kind of comes and goes and it has to do with especially the startup tone and reset tone. Um, and even sometimes in some of the programs, like this little demo program, you notice how the beep was uh, really quick and sounded normal. At other times, that can kind of almost be more of a squawk than a beep. And then the reset tone can either be a rising or a falling tone or sometimes just, just an odd random sound. So I would be definitely uh, on the hunt for what is causing that. If you have any ideas, uh, feel free to leave those in the comments. Now, the first thing I have to do before we can really get the uh, cassette going for an I.O. device is I need to build several cables. And the way that the Heathkit H8 is set up is kind of unusual in that instead of just having... Um, the input cable or the the audio cable from the cassette and then the output cable for record to the cassette and then the control cable uh, it actually has two control cables and I think the idea that they had uh, according to the manual was that you might want to actually have two separate cassette players one for recording and one for playing uh, or uh, reading uh, programs and I'm not going to be setting it up with two like that I'm just going to be uh, setting up one, uh, but I am wiring it for that option. So I may have to swap the control cable back and forth um, in the different modes for whether I'm recording or whether I'm reading programs. So that's one thing that'll be a little bit odd. I suppose that I could have just uh, joined together those two lines uh, so that the recorder either way, whether it was recording or playing, that the computer could start the tape deck but well, we're going to go with it uh, for now. Maybe I will get a second recorder. All right, cables are made and tested, and now it's basically time to get things set up with the H8 and a cassette recorder and see how we've done and whether or not we can save and retrieve programs from audio cassette. Before we can do that, though, we're going to have to connect up the cables to the I.O. card in the computer, and this is the H8-5. Uh, cassette interface and serial card. And uh, this is basically the control cable 
It's just a little uh, five pin with a with a blank center pin. So we'll get that connected up, and then I'll also connect up the two audio cables. Now, once this is all done, uh, we are going to have to do a little bit of adjustment to the card to make sure it's ready to um, read those audio signals. Oh yeah, and Heathkit had a great idea when they put screws through the bottom to secure the cards. This is one of the little annoyances to me. Uh, pulling cards in and out is this whole process. I almost wish they had a pin or something that stuck up through the bottom and into the holes. One of the things that I noticed on this card is that uh, there's two RCA jacks where you put the um, audio cables and they're kind of, well they're not really corroded but they have a nice thick coating of kind of a, a white type of tarnish on them. So when I connect up the cables I did spin the cables around a little bit just to wear through that make sure that we had a good connection on both of them. With the cables in place it's just a matter of finding a way to fish them out the back of the chassis and next to do the adjustments that are necessary to get the card uh, set up to read audio. And there is a little LED that you see there that's kind of flickering and that's how you adjust it. There's a potentiometer in there that you have to move back and forth until you get that flashing pattern and when you kind of get that centered you're all set and ready to go. Now it's just a matter of getting everything buttoned back up which is getting a little easier every time I do it. Uh, I had some advice from someone that said, hey, don't take the screws out of the carts and this will go a lot quicker for you. And uh, you notice the little support bar there for the carts does have slots in them, so it's just a matter of loosening the screws and sliding that on and off. And that generally makes this go uh, quite a bit quicker. And it's just a matter of those darn bottom screws that takes the time. Now here's something I haven't done in a while, and that's to take the wrapper off of a brand new cassette tape. Now back in the day, they would have had special cassette tapes that were used for computers. They called them data cassettes, and they were usually uh, fairly short, um, usually a 15 minute or at most a 30 minute tape. We don't have access to any of those, so I'm going to go ahead and use a high quality audio tape. This particular one is a Sony tape. Now something you needed to have back when we were using cassettes was you needed your special custom made tool for spooling the leader off of the cassette tape. In other words, a number two pencil with some tape around it. We're going to need to have a program that we can record to the cassette, so I think I'll just use the demo program again that's in the front of the H8 operations manual. If only I could key programs in this fast, I wouldn't need a cassette, but uh, unfortunately um, this is only done through the magic of editing. Okay, now we'll just go ahead and punch the starting address of our program into the program counter and run it just to make sure that we have everything entered okay and probably as we've already seen too many times our H8 is up and running. Oh and did you notice how that tone was kind of a couple of long beeps instead of the short beeps we heard earlier? That's that sound issue coming up again. And there was a terrible reset sound. Did you hear it? Okay, there's a few things that I need to do here to be ready to dump my program to tape. One is, is that in location 040000, I need to put the low byte of the program starting address. And in 040001, I need to put the high byte of the program starting address. And then I need to um, set the memory location for the end of the program. Now I've made a mistake here that's going to come back and haunt me. I did hit the dump button and I can see that the tape's recording. I heard a beep, so I'm assuming at this point that something has happened. And just to verify it, I'm going to go ahead and see if I have any audio on the tape.
Okay, that's a good sign. Something did record. Now here comes the problem. After resetting the system, I'm going to go ahead and load my program, which I can just load just directly from the keypad. And the cassette player starts up, and it doesn't look to me like anything's happened. I was expecting the display to switch to the starting address of the program. So I was expecting to see 040100 show up in the program counter, but I didn't. So after my second attempt to load the program from tape, I decided to go through memory and see what was there, and I could actually see that the program was there. So then when I manually go in and set the program counter and hit go, I can see that yes, the program did load and it's up and running. But the behavior I expected was to be able to just hit the go button after the tape finished uh, loading the program. So I decided to give it one more try and this time I was careful to make sure that I did enter the start address for the program into the program counter as well as um, the starting address into the, the two bytes reserved for that and then the ending address and um, this time I hope for better result. And so you can see the program finished. We heard that with the beep. And as we set it up to load the program back in, I'll go ahead and shut the system down, start it back up. <laughs> there was that squawk. And we'll go ahead and hit load. And now this time it's different. Instead of seeing the 030000, we see the correct starting address for the program, and all I have to do is hit the Go button. So, there we go. Um, we are reading from and writing to cassette tape. Uh, it's not the best solution in the world, and I would love to get the H17 disk drives going, uh, but that's kind of where we are so far. So at least there now is a way to save and load programs. Now, the parts of the project that are coming up next, those are going to be a little bit uh, more scary, uh, for me anyway. Uh, this monitor, or excuse me, this console, um, is a little bit intimidating. Uh, looking through the assembly manual, this has uh, a quite a bit more in it even than the H8 computer. And it has something rattling in it which makes me nervous. So I decided just to take a few minutes uh, pull it apart and at least kind of see its internal condition uh, whenever you hear things rattling inside of a piece of electronics as fragile as a console like this uh, it's a little nerve-wracking so I'm probably not going to stop thinking about it until I find out what is causing the sound so just a quick disassembly um, I'm really just going to take the cover off and look around I'm not going to start working on this terminal quite yet And to my relief, I found what was rattling around in there were a couple of the small clips that were used to hold the anti-glare shield on. Just taking a quick look around inside the terminal, it appears to be very clean inside, which is a relief, and there are no visible signs of any damage as I kind of look around. Um, I'm looking for anything that looks uh, burned, or I really was worried that maybe the back of that tube was, uh, was going to be broken. And I'm relieved to see that um, this has apparently been fairly gently handled over time. Um, there are um, some ICs that I think probably need to be reseated. And then, just like a lot of the Heathkit stuff, you can see kind of that, uh, that black tarnish or oxidation on some of the silver pinned ICs. And then I'm also told that frequently the connectors between these cards are a common source of problem. 
and that you need to kind of um, take those off and put them on and off a few times to get good electrical contact. But it's a great relief to see how clean the system is inside and it gives me hope that we can get this up and running. Uh, one concern that I do have is I see a bunch of the little blue tantalum capacitors um, on some of the boards and I haven't even looked at the boards underneath uh, on the bottom side of the unit. Uh, but I can see from the manual that there's also tantalums there, but um, on the H8 there were tantalums throughout the system. Um, there were some small green ones and then there was kind of a, a lighter voltage blue one that was in one place and that one popped when I brought power up to the system. So there's a part of me that's almost thinking about going out and getting some uprated capacitors, getting some 35 volt tantalums and just wholesale replacing the ones um, that are in the unit. I don't know what you all think about that. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And uh, also, uh, you'll see more about this H9 terminal as I continue to work on it and uh, figure out a little bit more about what it needs to get running. Well, that's it for now. I'll continue to keep you updated on the project as I go. And uh, hopefully, I'll soon have a complete working H8 system. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more about this H8 and some of my other projects that I have going.